Fantastic. We are officially live. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Legendary Chiropractor Podcast. I'm your host, Johnny Ruder, and tonight we are sitting down with a very special guest and a patriot of America, as you can see, Dr. Drew Clark. I'm very excited to have him on the mic tonight and talking all about get involved in your community, practice, being successful, loans, student life. I mean, we're talking, running the gamut on the conversation tonight, and it's going to be fun to see where we go, see what tangents we end up on, see what ones we follow more probably than we should, and uh, we'll go from there. But um, I'm excited to have him on the show. He's tuning in from Florida tonight. And um, when we get back from thanking these initial sponsors, he's going to share his chiropractic story, how he really got into the profession, and now how he's going to begin to branch out as he runs for state office here. So we'll be right back with Dr. Drew Clark, everyone. To Inspire awesome. Women is the so, elite boutique that first coaching one, company uh, for chiropractors who are looking to live life and run business in a way that is personal, unique, and authentic. They focus on business systems and money mindset mastery so you can pay down debt, be more profitable, and serve more people. Their goal is to empower you to achieve success by your own rules and your own definition. Head to toinspirewomen.com now because they know there's a better way. Cairo HD superior cloud-based practice management software. Cairo HD is a user-friendly all-in-one EHR solution built with one mission, to help you run your practice like a boss. Learn more at CairoHD.com. Dr. Brad Glowacki runs one of the highest volume, highest profile, highest profitability practices in the world. And it's all run with vitalistic communication procedures. Those procedures from his office are then shared with other chiropractors at his various trainings as a part of Level Up Mentoring. This information is created, developed, tested, and then packaged simplistically before being taught. With bruises and scars from making mistakes, Dr. Glow always delivers refined content that is battle-tested and simplified for use on Monday. To level up your life and practice, head over to levelupmentoring.rocks. That's levelupmentoring.rocks. Total Clinic Solutions is your go-to source for purchasing both brand new and refurbished chiropractic equipment, as well as phone support for repairs and maintenance. Call Derek and allow him to combine your wishes and his 23 years of chiropractic equipment expertise to find what's best for you and your patients at 704-622-622. 4089 or head to totalclinicsolutions.com now. It's time that chiropractors look beyond spinal alignments and measure the nerve connections that keep our patients feeling strong and performing at their peak. CLA designed the Insight scanning technologies to transform exams and generate powerful reports that give practitioners the certainty they have been searching for. Learn how CLA has partnered with practices around the world by going to Insight CLA Dot com. Easily share your passion for chiropractic and look good doing it with Above Down Apparel, offering a premium lineup of principled apparel that's impossibly soft, sustainably sourced, and chiropractic AF. Visit AboveDown.co and follow them on Instagram to learn more and score yourself some sweet chiro swag. SCED is the all-in-one system that allows for amazing control and flexibility of your scheduling. Yes, your next new hire. Every aspect of when and where you service your customers is at your command. SCED is tightly integrated with your existing EHR system. This software was made by a chiropractor specifically for chiropractic. No joke. Go check out their latest care plan feature by heading to go.sked.life slash legendary pod. Dr. David Tuhill is an innovative product and marketing strategist, bridging the gap between your vision and strategic plan. He will help you design specific products and processes that are both scalable and set up to produce long-term revenue and growth. He has previously worked with influencers that include Dr. Josh Axe, Jordan Rubin of Ancient Nutrition, Olympic gold medalist Sean Johnson, and many, many others. Schedule your call with Dr. Dave today by heading to meetwithdrdave.com. Thank you for allowing this brief disruption to take place. And now back to the program. 
All right, welcome back everyone to the Legendary Chiropractor Podcast. I'm your host, Johnny Ruder, and tonight we're sitting down with a very special guest, Dr. Drew Clark, tuning in from Florida tonight. And he is a fellow chiropractor, and he's also got some great news that he is going to share with us tonight and kind of his journey to get there so far. Um, so, Doc, I'm going to give you the floor, give you the mic to kind of share your chiropractic story, how you got into chiropractic, and now how you are on this journey to state office. Go ahead. Awesome. Well, this is, this is going to take me back a little bit, you know, because I used to be, I'm used to being the young kid on the block. And uh, that was always the, the case. And now I look back and I've been in the profession for over a decade now. And it's like, I don't know when that happened. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, looking back, you know, chiropractic, I think for a lot of people, you know, for me, it felt like the missing puzzle piece. I had really no idea um, besides knowing that I wanted to be a doctor. And at first it was an MD. I went to the traditional pre-med track. Um, but the thing was, is I wanted to get involved because I wanted to do things differently. I always had this natural mindset. Um, and then I came to, a, I had an epiphany one day while I was in undergrad and I said, you know what, how in the world am I going to change something if it's all I know? Uh, so ultimately that's when my journey started. Um, I had never, I had not heard about chiropractic besides having an experience as an athlete that looking back on, I would say was not much in the way of teaching me what the true nature of chiropractic is. Um, but uh, I'll tell you what happened at the time, and my wife knows this story, so it's, it's just perfectly fine with me telling it. Uh, <laughs> but at the time, I was, dating, I was dating a girl in undergrad, and her mom was a nurse who worked in an office where they only saw AIDS, AIDS patients. Um, so I went up and did a fitness, um, what do you call it, internship, and this was in Philadelphia. And she took me to the office knowing that I was trying to figure out what I want to do for a career. And it just so happened that the head doc for the office that she worked in, this AIDS clinic, uh, his son had just graduated from Life University. And at the time, that was when it was still fresh that Life University had done this, this research project, good or not, that highlighted the fact, um, that highlighted CD4 cell counts getting better with long-term chiropractic care. Um, so that his son was in the clinic at that particular point, adjusting all of the AIDS patients that his dad was seeing. He handed me a green book. And I read this green book and it felt like it was the missing puzzle piece. Six months later, I'm on the campus of Life University and here we are, right? Um, so I felt like I was called to chiropractic uh, and it felt like that missing puzzle piece. And now I am thoroughly thankful for the education that I got, uh, if only for my family and how we raise our kids and how we treat our household uh, with regard to health related things. I owe credit to the chiropractic profession for introducing that to me, and I'm grateful for it. So, Absolutely. Fantastic. That's a powerful story, and I, I think a lot of chiropractors find themselves in similar, you know, missing puzzle piece stories of like, holy cow, this, it either came to me one day, it called me, I discovered it somehow, some way through a traumatic injury, or maybe through an experience like yourself. And, um, I think we were all pulled into it a little bit and, and we're, you know, I like to say we're serving, right. And, and it's, it's true. And we're just trying to change. And there's a lot of people in the profession that kind of want to meld and mingle with other things and other professions. And it's like, what makes us different or what our differences are, make us unique, make us stand out. And that's what in anything right now, that's what the world is craving in my opinion, um, is something a little different than the no mainstream. So um, I'm excited for tonight's conversation. We're talking all about community. Um, I want to talk first and foremost about your state office running platform that you're on right now and your journey that you're on um, and just tying it back to getting involved in the community. So that's where we're going to start. Then we're going to talk about running a successful business, really dive into chiropractic student and recent graduate um, topics in regards to being successful, right? Running a business, not that isn't only a mom and pop shop, but is a true successful entrepreneur endeavor. Um, and I think you got a lot to offer there. And then we're going to mix in there a little bit of loan talk and how to, how to not abuse the loan system. So um, let's start doc with community involvement, community outreach. How'd you end up on this journey to state office? Go ahead. 
I, I guess if, 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 you, if we really start with, with chiropractic, the whole concept is, is really behind servant leadership. Um, so when you, when you get involved in chiropractic, you get involved because you want to make a difference. Uh, you want to empower people. Uh, you want to help people experience breakthroughs. Um, but, you know, that calls for you to have a certain type of empathy for the community. Um, which means that you don't just set up shop, if you will, and, and create a chiropractic office uh, just to make money. Now, money is a byproduct of service. Uh, so first and foremost, you have to feel empathy towards the community that you hope to serve, which means that you're not just there to take from it. You're actually there to also give back to it. And there's this law of equal exchange, right? So it all comes back tenfold, but you have to be willing to get out there, care for people, uh, want to see them do better, empower them to do better, um, and then it all it all comes full circle. So if you start with that basic foundation, uh, I believe something very adamantly, and that is that if something is true, if it's a truth, then it's going to transcend any situation. If I find myself having to change my truth in accordance with what circumstance that I'm in, I'll make an argument that it's not truth, all right? And it's hard work <laughs> to, to, to be that way, to be different for every person in every situation. And it really speaks to not really understanding who you are as a person. Uh, so when you talk about this state race, or the, the state rep run, it embodies the same principles. I looked out at America the same way I look out as, as a chiropractor. And I've told people for a long time, you know, um, people call me Dr. Drew in the office. Um, you know, there are some older people that sometimes come in and they call me by my first name. You know, and I don't make a big deal about it. Yes, I earned my degree. Yes, I'm a doctor. But, you know, I was an American citizen well before I became a doctor. I was Drew before I became a doctor. Uh, but these principles still apply. I looked out at my country and I said, you know what? I have something to offer. I want to give back to the country that's given to me. And I feel like I have a role in playing and ushering in a united front to help us move forward as a nation and ensure that my kids experience the same America, if not better, than I did. Mm -hmm. Which is the same concept with regard to chiropractic. We want children to experience the same health potential or better health potential than we did. We want to set them up for success. Uh, so that principle applies here, too. So I'm just answering a bell, if you will, because I was convicted based on everything I saw um, to use my talents, if you will, use the, the giftings that I have to give back to America also. Hence, the state race run, state, state rep race. Awesome. I, I love it. I'm, I'm pumped for you, Doc. I think you're doing great things. And like I told you before we came on the show live, I, I said I saw you come across my news feed so many times that it, just with all of the things you were doing, not only with chiropractic, but also with your state run. And I'm like, I got to get this guy on my show, right? And th that's where we're at today. So that's awesome. I'm, I'm super stoked. We run in a lot of the similar, uh, a lot of similar chiropractic circles. So I'm excited to have you on. And, um, you know, I, you mentioned a couple big things for me that I want to kind of repeat back to the audience to make sure they're really grasping and, and taking away tangible resources. That's what we call it here at the legendary chiropractor is things that you can actually use and apply in your life starting tonight, starting today. Um, because yeah, we're all about goals, but we're all about action steps, right? We got to put some action steps in place if we're ever going to make this place a better one for the future, right? And you said it, you said it yourself. And I want to emphasize that, you know, the change that I love that you kind of phrased it like this. Um, and I might put words in your mouth and, and please correct me if I do, but changes for the future, right? And, and oftentimes we look at it so one-sided and say, you know, change has to happen right now for me, for my situation. And it's, it becomes a me, me, me show, right? And in reality, you have to look at it like you are that it's for your kids, it's for your kids' kids, it's for, you know, generations to come. And that is what's so powerful about the message you're preaching and the message that you're sharing with us tonight is that it's it's change for the future. Um, and I think that that embodies, a lot of people actually can embody that message. And um, a lot of people, when we get in the rat race of the selfishness and the me show, it becomes a bit much. So um, I appreciate you for that. And then the other thing you said is um, that money is a byproduct of service, right? And a lot of people have a nasty, um, especially in chiropractic, have a nasty mindset 
about money. Can you talk to us kind of where that might come from and or what your thoughts are on that whole situation? And this is kind of a tangent that we're going on. <laughs> I think we'll, so, so we'll start with this one and see where it leads. But, <laughs> no, but yeah, so, you know, you, people sometimes, and I, I've talked to people about this, you, you know, you shouldn't go into any profession with regard to how much money it's going to bring you. Now, you, you want to make smart decisions, um, but if you go into figuring out how many people's lives that you can impact, um, to what degree you can impact those people's lives, you won't have to worry about money. You go in there thinking about how much money you can extract out of someone, whether it be through services or what you do or how long you can keep them tangled up in your web. And what ends up happening is, is you burn those people out, you provide a bad experience, and you don't create lasting change. You don't you're not functioning from a legacy mindset. And, mm. and legacy is a big term that I like to look like to, to use and speak from because legacy um, basically illustrates that, you know, it's the saying that uh, um, the founder uh, of chiropractic, uh, well, the developer of chiropractic uh, coined, you know, you never know how far reaching something you may say, think or do will affect the lives of millions tomorrow. It's like when you Go into it thinking about what kind of impact you're going to leave on someone. You don't know what that ripple is going to end up creating. You don't know what that child that you got under care um, and, and help have a high uh, potential uh, expression of life force, if you will, what that's going to translate into later. You don't know the adjustment that you deliver that drastically changes uh, this this young lady and then tra drastically changes her marriage and then yields fruits of children. You just don't know how far reaching those things are. But when you impact someone's life to that degree, you've created value for them. And when you create value based upon the chiropractic principle, you won't have to worry about money. Absolutely. It'll flow to <laughs> <laughs> It'll just flow in. Exactly. And and that goes back to your very first point that you have to have empathy for your community. If you if the empathy component I believe is lost or not there, would you agree that that oftentimes those are the people running into the roadblocks, those are the people running into the brick walls and they're not seeing the other side of it, right? This isn't a life changed. This is a dollar in my pocket. And that mentality right. that mentality should not should not exist. Um, and so, yeah, I agree with you wholeheartedly. We're going to take a quick ad break. When we get back from thanking these sponsors, we're going to talk all about running a successful business, running a successful chiropractic office, kind of transitioning into more of this recent grad and Cairo student topics. So I'm pumped for the future here. Let's get to it. Every chiropractic clinic needs a compliance program. If you are not sure what that includes or why you need one, let Dr. Robin from RHDC Consulting help you build your chiropractic compliance. If you are ready to get started, head to robin-hale.mykajabi.com and let Dr. Robin guide you to the end result. Dr. Christy Wick is revamping the landscape of women's chiropractic coaching. With a focus on connection and congruence, she's on a mission to empower lady DCs across the nation to create bold, successful lives and practices their way. Get started today by visiting theilluminatedsquad.com. Thank you for allowing this brief disruption to take place. And now back to the program. All right. Welcome back, everyone, to the Legendary Chiropractor Podcast. Doc, talk to us now. We're going to talk all about running a successful office, what that looks like, what that means to a, a variety of different people out there. So we're going to kind of take it from a 30,000 foot vantage point and say, hey, here are some tips, tricks, takeaways that you've learned in your past decade in the chiropractic profession and just kind of throw those and shed some light on them for the chiropractic students and recent grads out there. Go ahead. Well, I, I guess, you know, I, I when you talk about chiropractic, you talk about business, I, I think there's a couple different things uh, that we need to consider just to set a framework. And that is, um, on one hand, you have the chiropractic philosophy and the chiropractic principle. And in the beginning, you kind of highlighted this. Without this philosophy, without this principle, you, you do not have chiropractic. And, and that has to be foundational in the business that you're, that you're running, especially if you aspire to be a chiropractor. 
Uh, but number two, there's a business hand. And I think Sid Williams uh, coined this and talked about this the most. You know, you need both business and you need the chiropractic philosophy in order to truly uh, create a lasting impact in your community. Now, you can't have one or the other. All right. So chiropractors, doctors, we get into this to, to create a change and to, and to help people, um, which is good. And a lot of times chiropractors have a bleeding heart, if you will. All right. They just want to do it all. They want to give it away for free and so on and so forth. Um, while that's important to understand and have that that empathy uh, for people. But at the same time, you have to run a successful business because there's also people that are depending on you to be there year in and year out. There are people that are depending on you to be there through, like, for instance, right now, all this calamity that's happened over the last few months. we got businesses shutting down all over the place. Well, the people that you have created a lasting change with because you've introduced them to the principle of chiropractic, they expect you to be there tomorrow. Yep. They expect you to be there next month. And if you have not made sound business decisions, not only have you failed yourself, but you failed your community. Mm. Right? So, well, people are paying you dollars to lead them, not only from a health standpoint, um, but be there to lead them through um, graduations of their kids, uh, marriages, um, you know, so on and so forth, job changes. They're paying you to lead them through these situations also and provide a benefit as being a member of their healthcare team. So you not only have to understand the principles, you got to make sound business decisions too, uh, and understand that there is a law of exchange. There's nothing wrong with building value with people. Yep. And there being natural exchange of service, uh, and then fee for that service, uh, in conjunction with uh, detailed business principles that allow you to be a sound, effective entrepreneur and doctor. Mm -hmm. And you need both. Yeah. If that makes sense. It makes perfect sense. So yeah. That's the framework which we have to start before we start talking about any business stuff. Um and then if we get into it, you know, we have to also understand that it's important for, for students and it's important for, for docs to seek out a lot of this business information. And if we're all honest, we learn how to be a chiropractor and chiropractic school. I have business classes, and I'm not knocking business classes. However, there is a, an entire art to actually understanding how to run a business. Mm -hmm. And we have to understand that we have to seek out this information uh, because it is necessary. You can take the best adjuster, the best chiropractor known to man who lacks business acumen, and they fail at business. Now, on the flip side, you can take someone who understands business and is mediocre, and they can have a thriving practice. <laughs> I would prefer to have a person who's not mediocre, who is great at what they do, they're a skilled chiropractor, and they have business acumen. Those are the people that explode and create lasting impacts in their community. Yeah. Uh, so going into that, you know, some of the most simple things that you can start out with is understanding that you need to, if you're going to open a practice, let's just talk through that for a half a second. If you're going yep. to open a practice, I created a, I created a document, um, and it went through and just outlined every process and every procedure and every piece of paper um, that you need in order for a chiropractic office to function. Now, this is independent of whether you have one doc, three docs, whether you start with one team member or you have 10 team members. There's certain procedures that have to happen. How many people are going to sit there and outline in detail every one of those processes and procedures, divvy that up within their business so they understand that things are being accomplished and not getting lost? Right. right. So these are these are some business things that we have to go through beforehand. Mm -hmm. Knowing what, and I think uh, you said, um, I know your uh, Brad Milwaukee talks about this quite a bit, mm -hmm. right? Talking of understanding something as simple as an absolute stop loss. Right? So if you're going to run a business and we want to see people, you have lights, you have overhead, you have payroll, you have all these different things. Well, there is a minimum amount that you have to collect in order to make a sound business decision. Mm -hmm. So you know what that number is. Because if you know what that number is, you can't effectively create a, a care plan or a fee structure that, in, that ensures that you're making a sound business decision every time you recommend care to someone. Yep. These are all things that are important um, that detail or ensure that you're going to be there for these people year in and year out. 
right? Yeah. yeah. So we have to take these things into consideration. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think everything you said is spot on. And I would say the, the I drew kind of a, a diagram on my paper here in front of me that, you know, both of them, what they have in common chiropractic and business is they both have principles. And when you understand principles of both chiropractic and business, you have the opportunity in front of you to be incredibly successful. And I really firmly believe that, you know, when you combine the two and you are able to provide the healing, you're able to provide a space for people to come in and do what they do. And, and you, you know, you give them all you got in regards to healing, but you're also able to be there for them. Like you said, I loved how you put that. You're able to be there for them when they need you the most. And you're there because you've made the business decisions that mattered when they mattered. Right. And I, I don't oftentimes think that people are thinking that way. And so to have this conversation, and this is why we do these interviews this is why we do these podcasts, because it's, it's topics like that. It's things like that, that you say that you bring up. And it's like, if that changes, hopefully many people, but if it changes one person's thought process going into practice as a recent grad, man, you know, you, you never know how far reaching. We'll go back to that. You never know how far reaching. And so that's absolutely amazing, Doc. I'm, I'm really stoked for that. Um, now let's have a quick conversation on loans and how not to get stuck in the rat race of pulling out the max every single quarter. And I, I want to say from the look on your face, maybe you're speaking from experience. I don't know, but I want to hear from you first and foremost, Doc. Go ahead. <laughs> we've all been there. We've all done that, right? So here, here's, the, here's the reality of things. The reality of things is, you know, we hear this concept of, of living within our means. And the thing is, is in, in chiropractic school, in, in med school or any school of that nature, especially when uh, sometimes it seems almost impossible to, to, to carry a job and you find yourself taking out a bunch of loans unless you're just independently wealthy at this particular point, um, there's this tendency for chiropractic students to act as if they're receiving a check every quarter. Right. Like like they worked for some money and now we're going to go on vacation and we're going to buy cars and we're going to go eat lavish meals and we're going to go out every weekend. I mean, we're carrying on like this is money that we work for and earn. Um, I think that's a fundamental flaw <laughs> in, in the thought process. Right. Because that's loan money that is going to carry interest, which means you're going to pay for it 13 times over now. You're going to have the potential to do that because you have the potential uh, to have a very, very lucrative career that is very rewarding, both financially, spiritually and emotionally, because you're selling something, if you will, that stands to drastically change someone's life. But we still have to keep things into perspective. Mm -hmm. right? So instead of taking out these max loans and living as if. Um, and if I'm harsh, living a lie at this particular point, because you're not earning that money yet. Right, right. Um, let's let's stack it away. Let's let's look towards what we're going to be doing in the future. Um, if I, if you know what technique you're going to be practicing, let's pick up some some uh, used tables here and there because there's stuff that goes on sale all the time. You find a good deal, you pick it up, you put it down. Um, let's start making decisions like that. Or choose not to take out that money in the first place, right? Take out only what you need, live within your means, because all that's going to come back full suit, all right? Um, so I think we have to start there with that concept. Beyond that, we have to understand um, I'm a big proponent of more of a, I guess I would say an apprenticeship style of practice and, and, and ushering people, transitioning people from studenthood to doctorhood, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, because sometimes there's a big disconnect between what you learn clinically in, um, well, what you learn in outpatient clinic or a peak experience at some schools or preceptorship or, or in school, I should say, and what happens in real life, mm -hmm. right? Um, and there's a lot of intangibles and a lot of the things that I learned um, I learned 
by being there, by asking, by seeing other doctors do, by by seeing other business professionals do. And I picked up so many intangibles in doing that. Um, so I'm a big fan of, I forget the ad, I'm going to butcher this. I know I am. But uh, it's the whole concept that if I want to chop down a tree and I think I had 10 hours to do it, you can correct me if you remember this better than I do. Remember, I've been in practice for 10 years now, so <laughs> things are, you know. Um, but if I had 10 hours to chop down a tree and I had an axe, I'd spend nine, I'd spend nine hours sharpening my axe and an hour chopping down the tree. Right. So if we get that concept and get that point, uh, sometimes it's not. And there are people who come out, open up practice from day one and people who come out and associate and so on and so forth. But if it were me, if I had the capacity uh, to learn and sharpen my sword on someone else's dime. So therefore, that nine hours when I'm ready to chop down this tree. I go from zero to 900, you know, in 2.2 seconds instead of it taking five years to do the same thing. Right. If that makes sense, right? It makes perfect um, so sense. I'm a big fan of that. Big fan of that. And then beyond that, I think when opening your own practice, and I'm going to tell a story here in a second. When opening your own practice, it does not, you have to keep in remember, and I've heard people say this a lot. Your first practice does not have to be your dream practice. Uh, so there's this tendency to come out, and I want to start my own practice. I've just taken out probably a quarter million dollars in student loan debt. Um, and now I'm going to go out and take an extra hundred, hundred fifty thousand dollars in student, I mean, in, in, in debt to open up a business. Mm -hmm. um, and now before you, before you even blink an eye, you're 350, 400K in debt, you know, behind the eight ball before you even start moving forward. The story that I'm going to tell you is my story, is our story. And I've told this maybe once or twice, but our practice, our first practice, we started on what I like to call $20,000 in a prayer. <laughs> now, people would tell you that is not possible, but that's what happened. We found a used x-ray machine that we paid $1,200 for. It was film, right? If anyone remembers film, <laughs> they tell you that they don't do anything to you. But I knew my, my head ting tingled every time I went in that x-ray room. <laughs> And uh, mess with the pimples. Um, that's probably why I have no hair now. My wife just came in and said that. <laughs> but anyway, um, we, we found tables. Uh, we found a business that was uh, a local business that was going out of out of business, and we got their office furniture and a and nice furniture. We did all this stuff. Um, we took twenty grand. I'm going to tell you how it came about too. We took twenty grand. That paid for first month, last month in security on an apartment. First, last, and security on an office space and got all of our office equipment, and we did that for $20,000, right? So we took that $20,000, and now, fast forward to the day, you know, we have four docs in, in our office. Uh, we have, ooh, um, six or seven team members at this particular point, right? We have a marketing coordinator. So we have departments within our business, and, and I can talk to that, too, mm -hmm. because you don't want a mom and you want to actually create a business. And Michael Gerber, I read a lot of his books. Yep. And I'll never forget the statement that he said, probably going to butcher something else. Uh, but he said, um, uh, don't be a technician that has the occasional entrepreneurial seizure. Yep. And there's a lot of that that exists in chiropractic, right? We have great technicians, great chiropractors, uh, but we fail at scaling our practices to be businesses and scaling it beyond that, right? Yeah. Um, and I, that's an important concept that we need to talk about. Um, but yeah, so that's that's what happened with our opening, and we took that money. Um, the first office space we were in was a sixteen square, sixteen hundred square foot office space that we negotiated. I mean, when I tell people what we paid for our first office space, their eyes get like this big, and I'm like, it's negotiation. <laughs> <You can't> negotiate. <laughs> But, uh, you know, so when you talk about things like rent abatement and all those kind of things, a lot of people have no concept of what that is. So when we moved into our space, um, we didn't pay rent for the first, I think it was three months um, when we moved in. Um, we still paid for the stuff up front, first, last security, but then we got three months where we didn't have to pay anything. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we had a, a, uh, a gross lease. 
So it wasn't triple net lease. We had a gross lease. If you know what that, you know, know what that is, and uh, not you, but there's another concept that people need to understand. Right. There's a big difference in a triple net lease. Um, and then uh, we paid ten dollars a square foot for that office space in Southwest Florida. You know, I'm not talking about in the backwoods of Montana. I'm talking about Southwest Florida prime real estate. Um, so we started there. Now we're in a 3,000 square foot space that we own, that we own. And that was another negotiation. So when we moved into this new space, we didn't pay for any of the build out. The landlord paid for all the build out. I think the only thing we paid for is to run the Cat5 cables for the internet. <laughs> um, the landlord paid for everything else. Um, and we got rent abatement again. And we put in the lease that we wanted first right of refusal if the owner ever decided to sell. So guess what happened? The owner decided to sell. He had to come to us first. And we had the opportunity to say yes or no before it was put on the market. So that was all based on negotiation and forward thinking with regard to this. And now we, we own our space mm -hmm. by default. Um, so, yeah. That's These awesome. things yeah. to be important. Yeah. Absolutely. And I, I really will. I, I go back and listen to all these podcasts because um, I have to. I edit them and turn them into audio podcasts and release them on iTunes, Spotify, all that stuff. So when I listen to this again, I have a full page of notes in front of me already. Like when I listen to this again, I am going to take so much away from that because here's, here's the reality. I'm an associate right now, right? So when it comes to opening a practice, I, I tell people all the time, I say, if you listen to episode one, season one of this podcast, and you listen to current to date right now, today, you can not only follow my own journey and what kind of things I say and, and how we interact, but you can listen to these docs who have been doing it, who are literally living and breathing it and, and have been successful, have had their challenges, have done the things that you will inevitably do if you don't go out and seek advice from others. Um, like you said at the very beginning of this podcast episode, right? Um, and I think that's really important is because, yeah, we learn how to become chiropractors, right? Some of some schools teach you how to be a better chiropractor than others, and, and that's just the way it is. But then when you get out, you have no business aspect or acumen at all except for the 1997 marketing class that you took on the weekends that is still being taught – yeah, it's still being taught by the same professor that taught it to probably you and probably the person before you. So it's like, it just doesn't make sense. So you got to seek advice elsewhere and you have to look externally sometimes to get that advice. So we're going to thank our last sponsors. When we come back, Dr. Clark is going to drop some knowledge on what he thinks are some action steps for you to move forward and find him contact with him, connect with him, network with him and do anything you can to kind of rally around him and make sure he, he not only is successful in chiropractic, but also in all of his other endeavors that he's got going on in life. So we'll be right back everyone. Dr. Stu Hoffman, founder and president of ChiroSecure Malpractice Insurance is the foremost expert in both risk management and risk avoidance. Understanding the everyday challenges of today's practicing chiropractor and the current public perception of chiropractic has made ChiroSecure the fastest growing malpractice insurance program of the last 28 years. Find out more at ChiroSecure.com. Imaging Services' primary business is chiropractic solutions. With over 45 years in the industry of helping chiropractors, Michael Tokash offers free consultations on building your business. In the past year, Imaging Services has installed over 100 x-ray machines and digital x-ray systems in over 42 states across the United States. For more, head to theimagingservices.com. Thank you for allowing this brief disruption to take place. And now back to the program. All right, we are back here on the Legendary Chiropractor Podcast. We've had a blast of an evening with Dr. Drew Clark breaking it down for us, not only for chiropractors, but also just sharing his journey, sharing his experience, and um, pouring into another chiropractic corner and community of this world. So I, I'm honored to have you on the show, Doc. I thank you for being here. And I want you to have the mic to share some closing remarks and maybe any advice for chiropractic students 
And then where, you know, people can find you in regards to everything you got going on right now. Cool, cool. So I, I appreciate you having me on. I, I've enjoyed it. I like to talk, uh, as you can see. So <laughs> people can feel free to engage me uh, in whatever capacity they want um, because I'm an open book, ultimately. Um, for students, you know, I, I want them to really take some time and figure out, you know, what it is that they want this to look like. What are they try What are they hoping to gain uh, from being a chiropractor, from um, having a chiropractic office or being an associate, whatever it is that they, they're seeking, I think it's very important to understand where you're trying to go. Because if we understand where you're trying to go, then we can craft uh, the appropriate messaging, the appropriate mentorship, the appropriate um, planning to ensure that you get there. It's like starting and casting off a ship without first going through and figuring out where you're navigating to and what your destination is. It doesn't work. Um, so you really have to have a firm grasp of what it is that you want, first and foremost. Um, even if we talk about styles of practice, we talk about techniques. Uh, when you decide on a technique, you know, that can have play a huge and major role in what your procedurals look like uh, and how you have to scale your business um, thereafter. You know, so if you take us, for example, my wife and I are chiropractors, but we have an upper cervical chiropractic office. And when you talk about having an upper cervical chiropractic office, scaling that office is much different. It looks much different than anyone else. Um, you know, I had no intention necessarily on getting into politics, but now I find myself uh, in the middle of a political race. Uh, but because we looked at and understood that we wanted to create a business, not have a mom and pop shop, the business creates the latitude for us to have space to be able to give back um, in the political realm while still having a chiropractic office. I could not do that if we hadn't scaled our office in, in, in an instance that allowed that to happen. So it's, it's extremely important to understand those concepts, understand what is it you want so we can craft um, that journey to ensure that you actually achieve what it is that you set out for. And I think that's very important. There's a mentor of ours that says you do not get what you want you get what you're committed to. Hmm. His name is Ronnie Plus, and he's been a mentor of ours for a long time, uh, and the man is chock full of wisdom. Um, and that's one of the golden nuggets that he gives, and I think it's so, so, so true. Um, if you're committed to being a chiropractor, how, how much time are you spending perfecting your craft? Going to class is not enough. Going to technique club is not enough. How many doctors have you connected with? How many doctor's offices have you, have you been in? How many screening events, how many marketing events, um, how much are you doing that illustrates that you are committed to being not only a chiropractor, but the best chiropractor? And then you can attach that same meeting to business because you, in this chiropractic profession, you are going to be a business owner at some particular point. So how much time are you putting into mastering what it takes to build a business, to scale a business? Um, and ensure that you legitimately have a business that can function with or without you if that's something that you seek. Mm -hmm. um, and then beyond that, understand that there are phases to chiropractic. There are phases where you'll be more so involved and entrenched in building your practice. There may be phases where you get into some community service. There may be phases where you get into, into politics. Uh, but just understand that there are different phases and each one of those phases looks different and having a team of people that you trust in your corner, uh, accountability groups, uh, mentors, coach, if you will. I don't have a problem with the term coach because I play sports. Michael Jordan had a coach, mm -hmm. and, he's bad, and he's the GOAT, if you will, in my <laughs> opinion. And he has a coach. So if how am I any different? Or why would I not need or want someone to pour into? Now I get to choose because there's intangibles that I do look at. You know, mm -hmm. when I was early in the profession, one of the things that I looked at is I have a family. So, so my wife and I have three daughters, six, three, and one years old at this particular point, all girls, so please pray for me. But I love my girls. Love. Um, but we have a family. So when I looked at someone who I was going to allow to speak into my life, it was not enough just to speak to about chiropractic. I wanted to see if you had one of these on your finger, all right? Because what I'm not willing to sacrifice is I'm not willing to sacrifice my family. Mm -hmm. And if you're willing to do that, then I don't want to hear anything you have to say about where I need to go. 
Right. So I had to qualify the people that I was going to allow to speak into my life. And it's no different here. And I want to see that they're actually doing what they say they're doing. I want to see the fruit. I don't want to hear about it. I want to see the fruit. Um, otherwise, you don't have the capacity to speak into my life. I don't want to hear anything you have to say. Yeah. So I think these are all important principles and important concepts. Um, and then beyond that, um, you know, we also have a business that spawned off of this, and it's called Ice Scout. And the reason for it is because there's this, and we've talked about this whole philosophy and business thing a few times tonight. And it's like, well, how do we bridge the gap and how can we help bridge the gap? I look at big business. When you open up your practice, you know, a lot of people say, go near big box retail. Well, one of the reasons why you do that is because big box retail has done their research. Right. Walmart put up a store on the corner unless they've looked at every aspect of market research to ensure that they had the best possible opportunity to do well. So big business uses data to make decisions. So why not have small businesses be able to use data to make informed decisions? And we wanted to do that because chiropractors tend to wear 13 hats at the same time. <laughs> so we wanted to allow a chiropractor to be a chiropractor, but put all the business principles in front of them, visualize very nicely, so they can make data-driven decisions, just like big business does, while not sacrificing the art of being the technician, the chiropractor, mm -hmm. the doctor. You're right. So that's all nice, was all yeah i i think you nailed it and i appreciate you doc i appreciate you being on the show i um i can't wait to meet you if you're at crash in the future here let me know um but it's gonna be a good time and um i hope to uh, I hope that you know you just continue your journey not only in chiropractic but also as a state rep and I hope that you win. Um, I know you're doing the work. I know you're putting it in because if any if anyone were to look at your business and your yours and what you and your wife have created for not only your family but your community and those that you are serving from chiropractic school through associateships and doctoral um, programs like that man, they, they would be astounded and astonished by your incredible, incredible ways of going about things. So I'm, I'm honored to have you on the show. I'm honored to host you and I'm rooting for you and um, continue to put in the work, continue to lay into the future of chiropractic, continue to lay into the future of your community. And um, I'm sure I'm going to see you on a big stage someday. And um, I look forward to that day coming. All right. I appreciate you having me on. Absolutely, Doc. Have a good night, everyone. Take it easy.